Hey everybody, let's talk about some lights. Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about girl lights. Now I'm going to preface this conversation by telling you that I don't fully understand the science of girl lights and the science of lighting in general. It's a really complicated subject and I'm going to leave some links to the, in the description to some better conversations if you really want to dig into the science of it. So here's what I know. I know that LED lights, generally speaking, cost more up front but cost less to use. And I have noticed a difference in my electric bill as I switch to more LED lights. I also know that the way you use fluorescent grow lights versus LED lights is different uh, because LED lights can be a lot more powerful. So you have to be a little bit careful about how you do that. What are the other advantages of LEDs? Less heat um, that come off them so you don't have to worry about your plants getting too hot. So I've gotten to the part where I realized that I'm going to be starting things from seed and growing plants under lights for the foreseeable future. So whatever investment I make is worth it to me. Um, but that doesn't mean that you need to run out and go buy a $200 light if you're just getting started in seed starting. So I've got a mix these days of fluorescent lights and LED lights. Um, and I do, if I'm buying a new light, I prefer to start with an LED light. But they all work in different ways. Some are different colors. So it's all a little bit confusing. So I thought I'd just sort of show you what I have for lights um, and just kind of share some thoughts on it. And I'm also going to show you this one. Now, um, this company, Vivosun, uh, sent me this light uh, so that I could open it up and show you what it looks like. And we're going to give it a shot and see what I know really nothing about it. Um, I know it's available on Amazon. Um, and it is um, on the box. It says designed in California, but manu it is manufactured in China. Now I know this looks pretty small for a grow light, but that's one of the things with LEDs. Some LEDs are so strong that basically this light can cover a much larger area than just immediately what's underneath it. So let's open up this box, take a look at this light, and then we'll see how it might fit into my lighting system downstairs. Okay, we got some instruction manual here. Okay, so this is the actual light right here. Okay, so here's the actual light. It, it's very light. I assume this is probably just the rig to hang it and the power cord. Power cord. When it comes to lights, you want to have your lights on for about 16 hours a day. So you're going to want a timer because you're not going to want to be the one who turns them off and on every time. Well, here's some sunglasses. Should we see how they look? <laughs> what do you think? Is it a look? I'm telling you right now, it's very green through here. I don't actually know if these are... Can you see through there? I don't know if these are actually supposed to be something you wear. Uh, because actually LED lights can damage your eyes. I don't intend to spend a lot of time looking at them, standing there staring at them, but you know, it is a concern. Um, you know, we used to keep the grow lights in the room that is, we now use as an office. And uh, Mr. Mushmore patient would work in there pretty often. And I did start to get worried because the LED lights were running all the time. And it's one of the reasons why I moved the whole operation down to the basement. Okay, so this is nice that these come included with this. This is a set of hangers on little pulleys, so you can move it up and down. Uh, some grow lights don't come with these, so it's nice when they do. These hangers just fit in the little holes here. Okay, so then we're going to put our pulleys like that. Um, it says it's a full spectrum light. Now I know there's different spectrums. This one says it's a full spectrum. Again, this gets into science of lights that I don't fully understand, but I gather full spectrum is good. Uh, input power is 100 watts. Looks like it, it can be dimmed. Uh, you can run it at 25%, 50%, 75%, 100% or off. 
which is actually really nice because you probably don't need the full power of this light all the time. And there's a three year standard warranty on it. Okay, so this is really helpful and I will keep this because down here there's information on the distance a plant should be. So for germination, you want this to be 24 to 30 inches over the top of your seedling. So that is a huge difference from fluorescent lights that you want maybe two to four inches over the top of your seedlings. At seedling stage, you want it 24. Um, and then for, it says veg and flower. I assume this is for vegetative growth or when you're into a flowering stage. And for veg, it's 18 to 24. For flowering, it's 12 to 18. So then I'm going to take it down there and because uh, I'll have to play around with how much distance I'll be able to get under it to get a feel for how many flats something like this will cover and how exactly I'm going to rig this up. I also actually am growing a ton of plants that I'm overwintering down there this year and I've decided to actually get another seed rack and invest in more lights to start seedlings on so that I can leave those things down there because I don't have room for those anywhere upstairs. And they're all really thriving under grow lights down there, so I don't really want to move them at this stage. By the way, there's no information in there about what I'm supposed to be using these sunglasses for, so I think we'll just use them to look cool. It's very green through here. Okay, so we're down in my basement. This is a very unglamorous part, and this makes it very difficult to show you a lot because our basement is an old basement on an old house. But you know what? It works for me. Uh, for starting seeds. So this is just sort of an example of find whatever you can and make it work for you. So I have the new light down here and I'm going to sort of show you how it compares to some of the other lights I have and just briefly walk through some of the equipment that I have in my seed starting setup in case you're interested in that. Now I have done a video where I've done this before. Some things have changed um, but I'll link to that video and I'll link to a blog post I've done. A few things have been tweaked since those things have been done. So I have no two lights alike down here. I just have added them over years. So I do have everything set up on one of these really inexpensive rolling racks. I just buy the cheapest one I can find. There's not a lot of weight that's going to be held on these things. And then I move this and then I move the shelves around as needed. So you'll notice that the, you see some reflective material here. So that is a thick mylar that I have just sort of taped around there to create um, a, par a partial enclosure for it. It's obviously open on this side. And I just use that to bounce some more light around. Since there is zero natural light down here, I just wanted to take advantage of the light that I have as much as possible and bounce that around a little bit. So that's what I used. So I'll link to that too in case you're interested in sort of maximizing your light. I did make sure though that I was buying a thick one because thin mylar, it just tears and it's impossible. So these shelves have been rearranged uh, just to fit the house plants. This is not exactly where everything would, would be uh, normally if I were seed starting on this rack. By the way, my plan for this year is to get an additional rack, probably a smaller one, and move the house plants over to that. So I don't know how the lights are going to work, but, but we'll try our best on this. So I've got most of my mangaves up here on this top this top shelf. This is an LED light on top and this is my favorite light that I have right now. Um, this is an, a full spectrum LED light um, which is really nice especially if you're growing because it's a, a like a sunlight color apparently so that you don't have that weird funky LED glow if you're going to have these lights somewhere where you're looking at them all the time. So this is one that only has four bulbs but it does for me, I think it works just fine because they are LEDs. I'm just going to see. I think there's switches on it. There are switches on it so that you can turn this one um, down to just two lights. Looks like So it looks like you can run just the outer lights or just the inner lights if you want on that one. Now this is a fluorescent light. And uh, this just has four T5 bulbs in it. So not as powerful as the LED light. And this bottom light is just a three bulb, again, T5 fluorescent bulb one. Um, the weakest power of the three I have here, plus these bulbs are getting a little old. I run all of these lights. Um, I plug everything into a power strip down here, and then that power strip goes to a timer. Um, there are better solutions for that, so I'll link to those. There are actually power strips with timers in them 
And I think I'm going to get some of those. You want your lights to be on a timer, but you don't want your heat mat to be on timer because you want that on all the time. So this is a small LED light that um, has a lot of power to it. I don't particularly like this one um, as much. It also has a fan in it, so it's, it's pretty loud. But it does have two settings. The first setting, this is... You're not seeing the colors very well on the screen, I don't think. This is um, mostly blue and a little bit of white and red LEDs. And that's the leaf setting. And that is the bloom setting. You might be able to see the color better actually on the floor, which is mostly red. This light I bring into use when everything is overflowing. I've got plants everywhere. And I just need extra light to hit plants that are maybe on the floor or things that are sort of spilling out of the racks. Okay, so now I've hung the Vivo Sun light up. And I just want to point out that on these little pulleys, you just press these buttons and it raises and lowers really easy. There's also enough string left on these pulleys to be able to easily hang this from somewhere tall and have enough room to move it up and down. Now, I think I will use this on a shelf. I will set a shelf two feet apart, but I just want to show you the amount of light. First of all, the light is the same light. It's that, all, that full spectrum light, and it's the same one that we're getting off the LED light up here. I think it's a good time to just quickly run through a couple other things I have in here. This is my fan right here. It is just a cheap $6 clip-on fan. I just move it up and down the rack um, when I need it for seedlings and just, um, just put it on the low setting. And that's all I use for a fan. We've got pretty good air circulation down here. And I do have other fans available uh, if need be. Okay, and then I did just want to show you my heat mats really quick. This is a two flat heat mat. This one is um, very thin and this is the one that I like the best. The brand on this one is Jumpstart. Again, I'll link to these things, but they are sold in a lot of places. So you never know where you'll find these things. But this one I like quite a bit. Okay, so that one didn't quite cut it for me. So I got this one. This one is a little different. It's actually two layers and you can see the wires in it. Um, and it's thicker. But I wanted one to um, be able to reach all the way across an entire shelf. And sometimes I actually do need um, six flats on a heat mat at one time. So I like that it fits nicely, more or less, on the rack. Um, I do prefer that other one, though. It just seems um, to me that the heat is more even on the other one. And then one of the questions I often get is, do you need a thermostat for your heat mat? I actually have one and I stopped using it. I think most heat mats will only bring your ambient temperature up maybe 10 degrees or so, I think is what I've read. That's been my experience as well. So it's because it's quite cool in this basement, it doesn't get to a temperature where I'm worried that I'm going to get things too hot. So I just stopped with it. I think it depends a little bit on your ambient temperature and the way those work is they have like a little prod that you stick in the tuck in the soil and then you set your thermostat. I would say if you're prioritizing what you buy to start seeds, that is not something I would include because if you ever feel like things are getting too hot, um, you can always raise things up a little bit. You know, there are ways to get around that without having to have a thermostat get involved. I also felt like I never really knew if it was kicking off or kicking on, but maybe that's because it was so cold down here. Although I'm not starting any seeds yet, um, I know a lot of people are starting to get their gear organized. And all of what you see here has been collected and accumulated by me over many years of seed starting. I never went out and bought it all at once. Um, it has grown with me and I've developed a feel for what I like. And as I need to add on or replace things, actually I haven't had to replace a lot to be honest, but as I have to add on or when I do replace things, I know the things that I like. And for me, in terms of lights, I prefer LEDs. Um, I do feel like there's an energy savings there that I like. I also like the fact that they're more set it and forget it. With fluorescent lights, you're moving those lights constantly. Every time those plants grow, you're moving them up. With LED lights, um, because they sit quite a bit higher than the plants in general, you can... It's more of a set it and forget it. You have to keep an eye out, but it's not something you're going to have to move constantly. I kind of like that. 
that makes it a little bit easier. Um, you'll notice, by the way, that the mangave on the top rack here, which are by the LEDs, are pretty close to that LED light. That would be way too close for those lights to be next to seedlings. Keep in mind, these are sun-loving, tough plants that have been outside. These are not baby plants. These are not little seedlings that are going to get fried. So if you're wondering why things look as close as they are there, that's what that's about on that rack. As I've told you guys before, I don't fully understand all the differences in light colors and what they do, um, but I do look for full spectrum because I recognize that that's important. And to be honest with you, I just sort of play it by ear. Now, it was nice that that Viva Sunlight came with the directions for how high over plants it should be. That's a really helpful starting point. Keep an eye, on, I always say keep an eye on things. This is how I do most of my gardening. I just sort of feel it out. And um, if I have a question, I go looking for an answer. I hope it was helpful for you to get a glimpse at how I do my seed starting and the equipment I'm using. It's not pretty, it's not fancy, it's in my basement, it doesn't matter, right? It works for me and really that's all that matters, at least in my book for what I'm doing. So I hope you find a solution that works for you and we'll see you soon.